Question of the day, if you had to have one game, get an addition to it that is not an overhaul, but it's more of a, hey, if you like the game, let's try it with this flavor. Hey, you like cheesecake? What about a caramel cheesecake? Or maybe you like raspberry swirl cheesecake? Or how about some apple cinnamon cheesecake, right? You still love cheesecake, but let's try just a little bit of different flavor on top. Or would you prefer, and you can leave me in the comments below examples of this, what you would prefer, um, hey, you know what? I don't really like cheesecake. I'd rather have chocolate cake. What I mean by that is, would you rather have an expansion that just takes the base game, what it is, and adds a nice flavor to it? Or would you have one that goes, hey, you know what? You like this base game? <laughs> let's start over with something different. Not necessarily start over, but let's give you a completely different experience that changes and balances the game in a totally different way. For instance, I always reference Champions of Midgard because it's a game that went from a 7 to a 9 pretty much in most people's estimations who really liked the game because of the Valhalla expansion. It took the useless idea of losing your dice and put it into something uh, to where they become useful. Now, why am I talking about those games? Because today we're talking about Euphoria, Ignorance is Blitz. Now, Euphoria is an older Stonemaier game in the sense that uh, it's receiving attention a little bit after, let's say, like Scythe, which was just a huge hit and a beautiful game. Um, Viticulture Essential Edition, obviously, is another one in this kind of line of games that have received treatments and, and expansions from Stonemaier Games, and, and I'm not I'm not making that making light of that. What I mean is this, is Euphoria, you kind of thought was just let go as far as the games in the Stonemaier um catalog really because it's the one that got the least attention in a sense and maybe that's just how I'm seeing it because the way I uh, where I look and how I view things online but let's take a look right now at what Ignorance is Bliss adds to Euphoria if it's something you should check out or is it something you can just pass on right now So let's talk what comes in Euphoria Ignorance is Blitz right now. So, ton of stuff in here as far as new cards, uh, a couple new boards, and then look at these giant chunky meeples right here, chunky resources. These are humongous compared to the little ones. You got big oranges, big Blitz clouds, electricity, and then uh, the uh, water as well. So these look great. You have a ton of new building tiles, but uh, th this is probably the best thing about Euphoria in general. It's just the, the, the humor in it is just so great, like with these names of these buildings, like the uh, Field of Agoraphobia. That's fantastic, right? Uh, natural uh, Fluoridated Spring. It's fluoride in your tap. Uh, Department of Bribe Regulation, you know. Together we work alone. Can't, like, these are fantastic. I just love the names of these. Athenium of Mandatory Guidelines. Uh, Palace of Forced Altruism. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Storage of Insufficient Capacity. And Theater of Endless Monotony. Like, I feel I feel like this is, even though it's, um, gosh, it's, it feels like it's a it's a knock on our current culture, even though it's meant to be about euphoria and dystopias and all that sort of stuff. But you also get a new sideboard, and this sideboard is fantastic because it's the Antiques Bazaar. And what it is is a sliding card area so that this card is, you know, the normal cost of nothing. This one costs you know, resources. This is another resource. This would be two extra resources to get these. But it's nice to have these in your, uh, in the game just to have. Also, personal player mats. I love this. They're already color-coded for you, which is great. But it just gives you a nice place to hold everything, right? You've got a place for your stars, your resources, your, um, your, uh, your, other, your non, you know what I mean, the not the other resource type, building materials. You have places to track your own, um, hand limit or you know the uh, wisdom or the knowledge and the um, the other things but you also keep uh, your dice here and your workers on your track it's nice that you have just a place for everything now uh, you also with having these big resources eliminate the need for those three one two three you know resource track which is always troublesome uh, the other thing let's talk about the main bulk of this game you get a ton of brand new re um, recruit cards. Now some of them are factionless, which is a new thing. Uh, these factionless ones, you can only have one of them. Uh, these are Automa cards, so you can play the game with Otama, Automa, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's just nice to see that. But these are all new recruit cards, right? There are so many new recruits for each of the different factions. And again, the factionless ones are really powerful, but you can only have one of those. You can never have more than one. And I'm trying to find some. Oh, these are all of them. But uh, the other thing to note this is set symbol specific for a reason. You cannot mix this with the original game. You have to play with these specific 
uh, recruits and these specific things, or else you, you'll totally mess up the balance of the game. You just can't do it. it as, as it's mentioned in the rules, you're supposed to split these up. Make sure that you put these in the game or put the original in the game. Uh, but that's what this comes with here. Let's take a look what we think about it, and we'll go from there. So that's what comes with Euphoria. Basically, basically, at the end of the day, this is a lot more similar to the Visitors of the Rhine Valley and the Visitors uh, from Moors uh, expansions for Viticulture than it is a... I don't know, like Scythe Rise of Fenris or Wind Gambit or Invaders from Afar. It's more of a, hey, you like the base game? Let's just add some different flavor to it as opposed to, hey, wait a minute, what about airships? You know what I'm saying? Because here's what happens. Essentially, you're getting some new visitors, <laughs> some new recruits and workers and things like that that are different, but you cannot mix and match them. Now, that is something I enjoy. I actually like an expansion that says, no, 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 totally get rid of your other cards when you're playing with this variant and only use these. I think that's cool, and I, I don't think enough games do that. Uh, give you that option where it's like, hey, you, you're going to use this version of the game. You're playing the Ignorance is Bliss version, not the original version. I think that's cool. And I think more excuse me, more games would benefit from that kind of idea of let's give you a completely different experience with just one tweak. Right? So it changes the it changes the what you can do, changes the powers, and it also introduces factionless cards. And these are ones that are super powerful, but you can only have one of those. So uh, I like the idea that it does that, that it gives you the option to have uh, different workers, recruits, I should call them. Uh, also, you get the Antiques Bazaar. Some more little perks would be the Antiques Bazaar. Just enough of a tweak to where it's not a random blind draw, but it's in fact one of those sliding boards. And I love a good sliding board, Century. Um, I don't know, tons of games have a good sliding board where you take one and the rest of them slide down. Take one and the rest of them slide down making them cheaper I love that sort of thing right if you hold out long enough you'll get something really good for really cheap but that's another uh, addition that it has but also the bigger meeples are nice to have the personal player board is always a plus man that's one of our favorite things you know if you've heard Carla talk about games on here you know that a personal player board is a plus a huge deal because you just it feels like your area now the issues I have with Euphoria as a whole, as a game in general, is it feels more like a race, because it is. It's a race, not an engine builder. And these are two different types of worker placement games. You have your race and your engine builder. This one falls into the race camp because it's not about building engines. So playing Ignorance is Bliss, if you already have issues with the first one, isn't going to fix the issues with the first one. It's not like that. This is, if you really like the first one already, then get this for just better, more different flavor of Ignorance, of Euphoria. So just know that ahead of time. This this isn't one of those game-changing Valhalla expansions. It's a, hey, you like that taste? Let's go with a different taste. But that's uh, that's the majority of it. It also comes with Otama, and that's nice. Automa, too. You can you can play with the smaller player counts, yet still get that full experience, plus some stickers that patch up the board to give you a player count number where the miners start with. So it's got some good tweaks and some good you know tune-ups from the original game, but uh, having the Automa is really nice if you play with a smaller player count because you still get a fuller game experience uh, at a lower number so nice to see that kind of stuff in there but that's that's pretty much everything that comes with this one I want to make sure I didn't leave anything out I know I talked about it a minute ago but uh, yeah you know new recruits new markets all that sort of stuff in the Automa but um, if you like Euphoria then you're going to need to get Ignorance is Bliss there's no reason not to get Ignorance is Bliss if you like Euphoria if you don't like Euphoria this isn't going to change your mind this isn't going to go oh Wow, there it is. There's the moment where I just loved Euphoria after all. So uh, I hope that kind of sheds light on this expansion, what it does, what it doesn't do for the game. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at The Latest Retro and all that sort of stuff. Hope to see people at a convention this summer, whether it's Origins or Dice Tower Con. I don't know yet, but I would love to hopefully get out there, see some people, say, so, say hello and all that sort of stuff. But I'm Brian Drake. Until next time, I'll see ya. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower 